for those of you who have uh, ever been in a tag team message, this is not going to be your typical tag team <laughs> message. Uh, we're actually going to um, treat this more like a wrestling match. Not, not, not in a fight, not in a battle, um, but, you know, the, I, let me say it this way. The tag team sermons that I have ever been a part of, you were, fighting for the faith of the church. You were allotted a certain amount of time to preach, and then the other person, I put that there for you, <laughs> uh, the, the, other, the other party would, would spend an equal amount of time preaching, um, hopefully on the same subject. Uh, sometimes it wasn't necessarily that way, but we're going to do it a little differently today in the sense of if you've ever watched a wrestling match, um, a lot of times there do not exist in a wrestling match. It is a lot of slapping hands, switching in and back and forth. And so we have uh, written this out as best as possible with that in mind, uh, various things that I'll say, various things that she's going to say. Um, and so in that way, we're going to be uh, slapping hands. So when one of us sits down, it's not because we're done. It's because we're tagged, okay? So um, I get to start out, though, so that's fun. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so <laughs> I want to uh, just say that it's, it's going to be a, a little different. Uh, because of that, but I'm excited. I'm excited. One, it's a, it's an opportunity to to actually preach with with preach with. Um, uh, I'm not preaching to and or at or 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 anything like that. And and uh, this will be as real time as as possible. And we're going to uh, try our best to not interrupt a thought, but interrupt when we feel like we need to. And you just need to be here not so formal and stuck up because it's Sunday morning. <laughs> is, is that okay? Is that all right to say? Uh, we, we, plan <coughs> excuse me, we planned this with the intent of not being starchy uh, and, and, and not being, you know, nose in the air and, and proper Sunday morning because uh, this is anything but proper Sunday morning. Uh, <laughs> If you understand what I'm talking about, and so I'm I'm stoked about it, and uh, I've said my little introduction. So now tag my <laughs> wife is my, my wife is it. Thirty seconds. No. Yes. Is it on now? <gasps> I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can't see it. So it's been a really difficult process, actually. As you know, we are completely total opposite people in every single way, including how we prepare for uh, speaking. You know, I have, it takes me, you know, a month and takes Jason like 30 minutes. I have 15 pages of notes that I have to write out. And if I make one change and then I start and I rewrite over and over again, and then I have different colors and he's just like, here's my thoughts. <laughs> I was like, oh oh, we're going to have to sit down together. <laughs> like, I need you to sit down with me, please. So this has been really fun. So this is probably why we've never done it <laughs> before. <laughs> because, But we just felt that it was really, really, really important, like he said. So I'm really excited about this today. And uh, we did not get mad at each other. It actually was a really good experience, right? We didn't, okay. It was a good experience. <laughs> it was a good experience. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, That's funny. So I think that we're ending our refocus series today, right? This is no, one more. One, one more. more next week. So this is one of the last ones. I won't be here next week, so this is why we did it kind of this week. So we really wanted to talk about this subject, and it's been a subject that most everybody does not love a lot um, to talk about, but it's been talked about for years and years and years and years, and most of the time it's a losing battle. Um, a lot of times it's a battle that doesn't end. Sometimes we get up here and we beg and we ask and we plead 
and we do all those kinds of things. And we realize that through the preparation uh, of today and just different things that we have been presenting or sharing uh, this particular subject the wrong way. And we have shared it out of need, um, begging for change, hoping, like I said, that somebody uh, would catch it. We've been sharing it with the right heart, but with the wrong execution. And so we were not focused on the right things. We were desperate for something to happen. And so our heart was right. We've learned a gazillion things uh, doing this thing ourselves and in our ministry. We've learned so much, and that's where our heart was. But we just haven't executed it um, the right way. And so today we're going we're gonna to refocus on serving. We're going to refocus on volunteering, that, that word that everybody loves. Everybody say volunteering. 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 But it's not called refocus serving or refocus volunteering, but it's refocus planted. Amen? Amen. Because we realize that when we say volunteering, you may not understand what that means. And so we are going to share our heart about being planted, mm -hmm. refocus about being planted. And those of you that are, that are already serving and those of you that are already kind of in that, we would want you to refocus a little bit because sometimes it's just an act of, I have to do that. And that's the wrong heart. And we have executed it the wrong way for you guys. So, so we're going to explain this as we go along. But first, we want you to forgive us for bad execution over all these years. Forgive us and the other pastors that may have stood up here, other people that may have stood up here for bad execution. We ask for your forgiveness. Please and forgive us. <laughs> and uh, second is we want you to listen and come along with us on this refocused journey of being planted. So are you ready? Amen. All right. So, um, so some, some to, 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 to say that word for me. Statistics. Awesome. He said, okay. He said that Statistics. word. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So we've realized that we have been planted serving for over 54 years collectively. That's a lot of serving. So, I mean, if you really want to put numbers on it, I may have been doing it a little bit longer. 54 years. So 54 Next years. Next Sunday while she's gone, we're preaching on pride. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> 54 years. 54 years. That's a long time, right? I mean, that first, it makes me go, oh, I'm really <laughs> that old. But okay. All right. But we're going to share just a list of things. This is not a total list, but I just want to share a list of things of some things that we've done because we've been planted in the church or planted in whatever ministry we were at um, at the moment. Here are some of our investments. Are you seeing the key word? Planted, investment. Okay. So let me just read some of these. Cleaning over, this number is bigger now, it's not, probably 30,000 toilets. It's a big number, isn't it? When you work at a camp and there are about 10 dorms that have 12 toilets in them at least, and you clean them at least three times a week, if not more, almost nightly, you, that number adds up. So that number of 25,000 toilets was the number of toilets that I cleaned while I was at Birchfield Ministries. So that doesn't include every toilet that I cleaned before Birchfield or after Birchfield. <laughs> so it's in the 30,000s range or more of cleaning toilets. Amen? Mowing, secretary, sound person, offering taker, offering counter, announcement giver, announcement maker, Sunday school teacher and other teacher, van driver, camp counselor, greeter, nursery worker, youth helper, drama writer, drama performer, Coke machine filler, organizer, sidewalk sweeper, dorm mopper, outside and the inside, by the way, thank you, Birchfield Ministries, Dorm cleaner, painter, toilet unclogger. I don't want to tell you how many thousands that was. Okay, uh, probably hundreds, not thousands. Okay, vacuumer, plant cleaner, and duster. I know that doesn't sound like a big thing. That's why we don't have plants. But uh, <laughs> it, it really is. I We would have to take Windex and spray every single leaf and wipe every single leaf off. Okay, we're not going to talk about it. All right. 
bookstore worker, transparency girl, that's when transparency is your big, transparency girl, or guy, unloader of truck, kitchen worker, shower cleaner, sink fixer, light fixer, carpet remover, tire, tile puller upper and layer downer sometimes, dance team, I don't know why they asked me to do that, but I sure did it, all right, concession worker, safety team, building maintenance, rural ranger commander, guest follow-up, building lock-up and unlock, babysitter, trash runner, fellowship setup and tear down, youth and children teacher, just to name a few. And the list goes on and on. And, and, and it's not, we're not saying that so that we can just say, oh, we're so exhausted. We're so tired. But we said that because we want you to know what we're going to be talking about is not something that we have not done. Okay? When, when we talk about serving, when we talk about being planted and giving an investment, we're not talking about sitting in an ivory tower commanding the troops. This is where we have been, where we are at times, and, and, and where we'll continue to be, okay? Because this is, this is something, that the whole idea of volunteering and serving and planting and investing and all of that, all, that, none of that ever removes the leadership, Amen. okay? Amen. Uh, because you can't lead people where you've never been or take them where you're not willing to go. Okay, so, so we're sharing this with you, not so we can brag about the number of toilets that we have cleaned or unclogged or, or the times that carpet has been pulled up and, you know, yes, that was Stacy, and she probably would have been better at a men's work day because she has more, ta more uh, experience with it than I do. But those are things that she did. But, but here's, here's the point. As you can see, we need to stop just going to church. Uh, God's highest calling for you as a follower of Christ was never to just go to a church, uh, never to just go to a building, but to be conformed to the image of Christ, to be planted in the church, to be the church, a light shining into a dark world. And so what we're saying is, is that you're, you, the, the call of God was not to sit on a pew and keep it warm. The call of God for the church, and, and okay, we, we could argue theology, we could argue context, we could argue Bible time if you want to, but regardless, the call of God is not just to say, I'm a member of the kingdom, let me show you my card. It is to show you I'm a member of the kingdom, that I am planted, that I am invested in what is going on here. So here is the scripture Psalms we're going to focus on. 12 through 15. Everybody turn to that. Psalms 92, 12 through 15. Or if you don't have your Bible, it's okay. It's good to have your Bible. <clears throat> All right. Psalms 92, 12 through 15. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. Amen. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in we're going to read that. Let's just start over. Let's, let's just start over. Ready? The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in? They are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. That's good word, right? That's, that's good. That's a good word. So we're going to look at at a couple of things in this passage of scripture uh, that, that I'm going to share with you. And, and one of those is, is what the meaning of the word flourish is. Because it says that the, the righteous flourish like the palm tree. They grow like a cedar in Lebanon. The word flourish means thriving. It means growing. It means prospering. It means to be a blessing. It means to have spiritual growth. In other words, when you're planted, you are thriving, growing, prospering, being a blessing, and growing spiritually. Uh, the, then, then the psalmist moves on, and he compares the righteous flourishing to two different kinds of trees. He compares them to the cedar 
and to the palm. Now, now I want you to understand a couple of things while I was looking at cedars and thinking about cedars and palms and kind of looking at... Uh, looking up some information, uh, Googling them. A and I can tell you that there are many people who have a lot of negative things to say about cedars. We cut them down in front of the church because there's parts of cedars that are not good for the ground. But we have to take into consideration the palms and the cedars that the psalmist is talking about because he's not talking about cedars like we see. He's talking about cedars that were growing in that region, and, and he was talking about palm trees that grow in that region. And, and so let me, let me share with you what he is seeing, because he, here's the thing about cedars. They develop deep roots. In, in fact, the deeper the roots, the stronger the tree. Right. And not only that, but in Israel, they are found growing on the sides of Rocky Mountain places. So they don't grow in lush places. They grow in the hard spots. Amen. Right. The places that look like it's impossible to grow in. Right. It's a good word. Come on, somebody. The, the, this, is, this is what it is. And, and the palms, get when, when, when I was in Israel on our tour, uh, we were out in the wilderness. And the wilderness is not a bunch of trees. It's actually uh, rocks and grass and dirt and heat. It's a fun place to live. <laughs> and everywhere that we would drive in our buses, there would be these patches, you know, like we see orchards. You, you go out here to Eford's and you see orchards of, of various kinds of trees. Well, there would be orchards of palm trees in various places. Some of it was just because I guess they want to farm them there. I, I don't know all of the, the, the agricultural things that they do there. But our tour guide said this one thing that has stood out to me for as long as, well, as long as uh, I can remember from when he was our tour guide. And he says this, palms are a sign of life. Amen. In, in, in fact, he said, where you see a palm, there is life there. There is water. There is nourishment because palms do not, which, which is interesting because a lot of times palms grow in the desert. That's now, get what I'm saying <laughs> here. He has yeah. compared the righteous flourishing to yeah. two trees that are capable of growing in terrible, tough places. Yes, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, somebody. That, that's good stuff, and, and we need to grab a hold of it. What, is, what does this all mean to us in, in the light of serving? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, I didn't know this about the palm tree. But the older the palm tree, the sweeter its fruit. Amen. Did you know that the palm tree is the most productive between the ages of 30 and 100. Don't miss that. That's good word. <laughs> I'm, just start, I'm just starting to be productive. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> but listen to that. Do you, do you know what that means? That means that there is no such thing as retirement. Right, 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 right. Oh, boy. You know, I know I'm talking to a mixed bag of you people word, here, right? the people uh, but, the word. but this is what the word says. And, and if you look at the word, you, uh, my wife has had noticed this as we were studying. She said, you know, I, I noticed this about all of these great heroes of faith. They didn't get what they were supposed to be getting until well after 40. They weren't more, they're most productive in their ministry until well after 40. And so let me tell you, if you are entering into your ministry between the ages of 30 and now into 100, you are just now in the prime spot yes. for the productivity yes. that you're supposed Amen. to have. And, and so if we will grab a hold of this idea that we are, we are the cedar and the palm. Yes. Amen. Yeah, that's a good word. And we are planted in the kingdom. And if the righteous flourish in the spiritual and in the natural, the way that the cedar and the palm flourish, the best days are ahead if you are planted. Good word. We got to be planted. The key to this passage, you've 
must be planted. When you are planted, it means you are taking root. When you take root, it means that you believe not only that the place you are planted contributes to you, but that you also have a significant contribution to that place as well. Don't miss that. Too often we sit around like a sponge soaking up everything that comes to us, never willing to be wrung out and disperse what we have soaked up. But if you are planted, you must realize that not only can you come and sit and have, have good nourishment to eat, but that there is also something significant on the inside of you that you can give in return. Amen. Yeah. So, wow. Anytime you want to come in, you okay. know you can. <laughs> All right. So in the Very church, good. being planted is serving. And more to the point, it's volunteering to serve. It's investing in the kingdom. And, and really, my time is kind of coming to an end in this, but it's good. Uh, being planted or serving means that you understand two things. And I, and I want you to, to, if you don't remember anything else, don't remember, oh, well, pastor said that old people are productive. They are, but don't just think on that part, okay? Don't just focus on that, all right? But I want you to focus on these two things, and uh, then my wife is going to take it home. <laughs> Number one, understand your life is a seed. Number two, understand your life is an offering. Yes, right. See, the mere fact that Scripture speaks of being planted should give this away that your life is a seed to be sown. Matthew 13, the parable of the sower is important. Yes, the seed is the word, but don't overlook the fact that the word, the seed in Acts, was spread through people as they declared it in every capacity that they could. In today's world, one way of spreading the power of the word of God is through volunteering in the church. The intention of sowing is the possibility of production in whatever area the seed is sown. Your life is a seed. Secondly, your, your, your life is an offering, and the offering of your life is one thing. It's not physical. Yeah. Hear this. It's not physical. Right. It's the commodity of time. Right. Listen to that. And that's the yeah. reason that most of us go, nah. Mm -hmm. My time is precious to me. Not realizing that your time can be taken So if your, if your time can be taken, it's not really your time. Right. Okay, well, I'm just going to leave that one out there in the, in the atmosphere for you. Because we often make the argument that time is money, that my time is my time. And that would be true, but we must realize that time is really, a, a, as much as it's not yours, get this, time is really just time. Right. Nothing more. There's nothing special about time. In fact, can I tell you that God doesn't even operate in time? He's on time, but he doesn't operate in time. Okay, well, that, that's something that, that we can preach some other time. And what's even more important is that time doesn't, it doesn't belong to me. It was here before I got here. It will be here after I leave. It belongs to the one who created. Therefore, it is given to you. It is meant to be given through you to others as well. Amen. <laughs> I feel good. I feel like Amen. I preached today. Yeah, we're going to keep going. So I hope that you're listening. I hope you are not on your phones. I hope you're paying attention because you need to hear this. Amen. We need to hear this. So I have some questions for you that I want you to answer as we've talked about some of these things lining up to, to one and two, right, about your life being a seed. And it being an offering, those just in itself, you should really just think about that. So are you truly rooted, planted, flourishing? It could be, are you already doing this? Are you already that? Or, or do you need to become um, that, right? Serving with a pure heart, true serving. So let me ask you some questions to know, kind of gauge where you are. Do you serve so others will see you? I'm only going to do this because I know that they'll see me. 
or I'm going to make sure to show up a little bit late to get this done so everybody will see that I'm serving. I'm going to make sure and make the biggest commotion I can so that, like falling down the stairs, to make sure that people, <laughs> that wasn't a service moment, by the way. Um, do you serve so others will see you? And I'm going to just say it this way. I want you to ask yourself, do I serve so others will see see me? Here's another question. Do I serve with the expectation of getting man's approval? Do I stop serving because I'm not getting enough praise from man? That It is great. We should honor everybody who is planted and flourishing and serving. We should. It is great to get a pat on the back and a thank you. It feels great. But if that's the only reason you're doing it, you may not be planted. Do I serve with the expectation of getting man's approval? Another question. Please listen. Do I compare my serving to someone else's? Well, they only did that. And I have to do all of this. It only took them 15 minutes to do their thing, and I'm up here at the church for two and a half hours. You fill in the blank however you want to do that. Do I compare my serving to someone else's? Another question. This is checking if you're planted, okay? Do I only want to serve in the easy areas? <laughs> I can set up and tear down. That gets me in and out quick. I'm not about to go into the ministry. <laughs> no way am I going to come clean the church. I'm going to let the pastor do it because I don't have time to get it done. He can do it. He doesn't do anything else anyway. Do I only want to serve in the easy areas? Number five. Do I think I will miss out on something if I serve? I can't, I can't serve in the church right now. I don't want to miss out on something if I serve. I can't serve in the youth. I don't want to miss out on Wednesday night adult. I can't serve in the nursery. I can't go serve in the engaged uh, equip classes on Wednesday nights. I can't go do this or I can't do that. I don't want to miss out. In all the years of serving, I never ask for that. The Lord is faithful to give you what you need at the moment you need it. Was it the same as what everybody else got? At that, No, but I never, ever missed it because it wasn't about that moment. I just... Think about that. And this, we need to refocus, and I'm not, I, I don't want anybody to feel bad, but, you know, we need to refocus why we're doing what we're doing. Everybody that's already planted, like maybe we need to refocus a little bit. Here's the last thing. Do I say to myself, someone else can do it? For whatever reason. Somebody's going to do it better. I don't have time. I don't want to. I already do enough. <laughs> So-and-so really needs to be the one to do that, whatever. Do I say to myself, someone else can do it? All these questions, they really boil down to, uh, to one thing. These questions are earmarks for pride. I said I wasn't going to preach on pride, and I'm not going to preach on pride. But the truth is, is that if my answer is yes to any of these things, I have pride. Can, can, I, can I say that the, the thing most dangerous to serving is pride? Because either pro, you're, you're, there's either pride in wanting to be seen, there's a, a false sense of humility in not serving because we say we have nothing to offer, and that's pride. Or, or there is the, uh, the, the, we want someone else to receive a blessing. Pride. Pro, or, or, or pride that chooses not to serve at all. The biggest enemy to being planted is pride. 
the, the, the biggest reason that churches lose out on volunteers. And can I tell you that, that next to, leader, to, to leadership in the church, volunteerism is the second greatest need in churches. And I would dare say that it, it, it is not so much about... Well, I'm just going to say it this way. I, w- I would dare say that the problem is pride. I'm not capable. I'm not qualified. I, I don't want to miss out. I, I, I want someone else to be blessed. I am so blessed by what I do. Or, or God has blessed me so much. It's someone else's turn to receive blessing. Can I tell you that if that's your attitude, neither one of you will be blessed. Because you can't wish a blessing through pride on somebody and you sure won't receive a blessing through pride. So pride is one of those things. It is the quickest way to pull up your roots out of the ground that you are planted in. So there's not a whole lot more to say because I think that it's pretty... um, what's been said is is strong enough you know we don't want to beg you to do anything we want you to understand what it means to invest and be planted so at the at the beginning there was this list of all these things that we had invested in over our big long years of of uh of investing but i want to share with you a list of things that we have shared in because we invested also. Had we not been planted, invested, flourishing, we would have not experienced these other things either. So I'm not talking about things that I got to see. If you're just sitting in your pew, you just get to see them. I'm talking about sharing in them. Thousands of salvations. You know, there's like an 80-20 principle where 20% of the people do most of the stuff, right? And there's that 80%. And ministry, it's a difficult thing. Being planted sometimes is a difficult thing. But if you invest, this, what I'm fixing to talk to you about, makes every hour worth it. Make every bit of time that you have to give up worth it. Every bit of moment you're away from your family or you bring your family and it has to be reestablished and changed a little bit, the dynamics of your family. Everybody understand? Salvations change. Lives change. Depression gone. Devils cast out. Supernatural healing. Seeing eyes open. Seeing legs extended, not because I sat sat and watched, but because I knew what I was doing at that moment in that ministry, for whatever reason it was, had something to do with what was happening there. And I know this seems weird. Had I not made that dormitory be what it needed to be for those people when they came in, they couldn't have experienced what they did there. Everybody, everybody understand? Why did I have to clean those, those leaves the way I did? Because my leadership wanted it that way. And it, God is a God of order. And I knew it was going to bless him so that he could minister the word the way he wanted to. When he came in and I had, we had repainted the sanctuary. <laughs> and he walked in and we had just finished the last stroke. And he goes, I don't, I don't like that color. One o'clock in the morning. We'll paint it. We'll paint it again. Why? Because I trusted who he was. And I trusted the God in him. And I knew that I was going to see girls come to the altar that were going to get free. But if I just sat back and complained the whole time, or just sat in my pew knowing that somebody else was going to do it, or I was picking and choosing and comparing my servant to somebody else, it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have invested. Holy Spirit and feelings, right? Experiencing the supernatural. 
relationships restored and healed, forgiveness, spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual parenting opportunities. We have spiritual children all over the world. It, it is a, so exciting. I mean, do we get to take total um, uh, ownership of that? No. But it was something, you know, all the hours that they spent at our house, all the hours we were in the van, all the, whatever the case may be, we invested in that. And I get to share in that. Brokenness to fully restored. Suicidal thoughts vanish. Cutting to no longer cutting. From rebellion to submission. Fill in the blank. The other stuff was just stuff that got me that's going to get you to be a part of this thing. And it's different from sitting and seeing it than when you know you've invested right. and you're planted. Okay. So, yes, I'm share. Gonna, I'm going to share a story with you real quick. Um, and and I, want you to, I want you to understand this is a testimony of why I am here. Um, growing up in children's church in, in our town, uh, at, at our church, we had a lady, and her name was Marion Whitener. She was Australian. She was so cool. Her husband was a tyrant. Because he would walk through the chairs in children's church, and it didn't matter where he was standing. Somehow, his fingers would reach the backside of my head and thump me in the back of the head so hard because I was talking, because I was acting up, or because, uh, you know, wasn't paying attention to whatever. And, and, and so there, I mean, I hated going to children's church when he was around because I knew that I was getting thumped <laughs> at least twice a service. I was going to get thumped. And he would hit me the first time, and I would get mad. And then he would get me again, and everybody's like, oh, my God, they just let people thump you in the back of the head? Well, growing up in the 80s, folks, <laughs> it didn't matter. They could take out the paddle and whoop your tail, and your parents weren't going to say nothing <laughs> because you learned you don't, you don't misbehave in church, and it doesn't matter if it was children's church or whatever. So, sure, in the 21st century, we could have sued the man, but why would we? <laughs> and and so anyway, that's not that that's not there here nor there. But he would he, so so he would walk through, and I I relished the moments when he was not in the room, or when I knew he was on business away, because I knew at the very least my head was going to get a vacation, <laughs> right? And, and so this was the entire lifespan of me in children's church with this man. He would he would wreck the backside of my head. And he would get the same spot every time. It was like a gift. The Holy <laughs> Ghost had gifted him with this. And, and, and when I moved into you, so she didn't have to keep calling me down or calling whomever else down or whatever. He just, he was motionless unless time to not be. He would sit in there. He never spoke. He never got to preach or teach. He ne but he made sure when he was in the room, you were focused, you heard the word, and you responded. And, and, and I can tell you this, that as I grew up, and he, he remained in the church until they finally had to move uh, for work reasons, but it went from this relationship where I couldn't stand him to when I was a teenager that he would start to call me by my name to when I had graduated, I could look him in the eye and know that if I had a need, he would be there to pray for me. Because he invested in me when I was a terrible little kid. <laughs> On up to, I had moved beyond that point. And, and, and let, me, so let me tell you, would you be able to pick him out in a room? I probably wouldn't be able to pick him out in a room. It's been way too long. But I know this. Don Whitener is a reason I stand here today. Because he was planted. Because he was investing. Sometimes you don't know when you will reap the fruit of what you have sown in a person's life. Right, right, right. But I'm here 
20 plus years, 30, 30, how old am I? Old. 40 plus years later. And I fully believe that because he was willing to thump me on the back of the head, I get to preach. Yeah. I heard the call of God. I Amen. said yes. And I stand in the pulpit. Amen. So in closing, of course, we have some things for you that we want to give you. If you want them, you choose to take them. I've got, we've got some seeds that are up here in this basket, and uh, we also have a sheet that has areas of opportunity for you to invest, to be planted. And I know that many of you are serving already, but I want you to really know if you are planted. Everybody, everybody understand our hearts, right? I'm so thankful that you are serving, but I want you to be planted. We want you to be planted with us and to flourish um, with us and to do the things that the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, has for you to do. <coughs> so at the altar, I'm just going to ask that if you're serving and you answered yes to some of those questions earlier, Maybe you just need to refocus a little bit and not dread the area <laughs> where you go. You know, maybe you need to rethink and say, why am I really doing this? Not to say not to do it, but to say, what kind of investment is fixing to happen? And what is the kingdom weight of what is taking place? And for those of you that haven't quite been planted, because most of you are going, where can I, I just don't see a place. There's just not a place for me. I want to invest. I want to be planted. I want, I promise there is a place for you. If it doesn't line up to one of these places on this piece of paper, come talk to me. We need somebody, not need. We would love for someone to invest, to just contact with people who haven't been here in a while you don't have to be physically able to walk and run a marathon you don't have to bend over all you need is a pure heart and eyes to see and we'll help you to do it there is something for everyone if you want to invest and you want to be planted we want you to go on this journey with us we want you to flourish in this church, in this community. <clears throat> we want each of you to be rooted, planted, flourishing, not leaving it up to the teenagers to serve in every area of the church. Can I get an amen? You understand that our teenagers serve in children's ministry on Sunday mornings because adults have not invested in it. We have teenagers in our nursery helping our adults that have invested because other adults will not invest in it. And the only reason they're not serving on Wednesday night is because we refuse to let them invest on a Wednesday night or they would have said yes to it. The palm tree flourishes the most when? Between 30 and 100 years. Not at 16. Our youth should be getting fed. I praise God that their heart is pure. And they've been serving since in children's church. Since <laughs> in children's church. We had our fifth graders in children's church help in children's church. So children's church would have helpers. Did you know that? Because adults wouldn't invest. I promise there is something for you. You want to learn how to run sound? All you, you, you can get a helper, but I promise there's a stool up there that you can sit down in, on 
and you can worship Jesus back there. I don't know if you've ever looked, but when Chris is worshiping, he's lifting his hands. Just because you're running sound doesn't mean you're going to miss out on the worship experience. I, that's pretty sturdy. I've jumped back there before. You can jump just as much. We need somebody to invest with Chris. He wants to sit with his family. Go on vacation. But we're not going to beg you. But we want you to understand that it's not about, like the pastor said, putting your time in. I mean, it is time, y'all understand. But we want you to see the bigger picture. Amen? Amen. I want you to grow where you're planted. We want you to do more than just receive, but we want you to make this your focus, this core. This is part of our core vision. This goes into our engaging, and it goes into our expansion. It's all part of the vision, of the core vision of what we have. Don't you want to serve, be planted with joy and not with a critical spirit? Wouldn't it be awesome to come in and say, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see the investment of what God's going to do. And I am planted and I am ready to go do whatever it is that I need to do. I don't have to pray about it. I'm going to do whatever needs to be done because I'm planted here. Because my roots are here. So the prayer this morning, the altar. If you need to refocus or if you need to become planted. We want you to make your way up here. Grab some seeds. Keep them visible for you to see. Don't plant these. I mean, you can. But keep them visible so you see it. I picked all pretty flowers because that's what I see when I think about investment. Everybody becomes beautiful in their own time. Amen is the word. And come and get one of these papers. Even if you're already serving, maybe the Lord wants to say, I want you to be planted in, a, in another area. I want you to do something different. Or God's already popped in your head and say, we, we need this. We, we need to invest in this. There's places for that there. So pastor's going to pray and, and the altar's open. Time so to let's get stand. Refocused. Let's stand this morning.